Hello and welcome everyone to the CFS Health Recovery Podcast. We have a very special guest today with us and I'm so excited to introduce you to her. Some of you know her. I know the members of our program of the mentorship program know her, but a big welcome to Dr. Olivia Lesler. She is our resident medical consultant at CFS Health. She runs the most insightful, amazing research-based lesson sessions every single month inside our program. And a conversation with Dr. Olivia is like going to a library, like a medical library, and like reading a hundred books all at once. And then you kind of learn so many different things in the conversation that you walk away going, oh my God, she is so smart <laughs> and I know nothing. <laughs> so excited to have you on. We're going to do a couple of episodes together because I know you and I always chat for long lengths of time and the conversation can get deep and really, really good. And so we're going to start the episode really on chronic fatigue syndrome and chronic illness in general. So first of all, welcome, welcome to the podcast. So pumped to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to this one. We've known each other for a long time now. I think it's been over three years pretty much since you came on board. I think we need to share this story really because it will lead into the conversation about the world of chronic fatigue syndrome and chronic illness. So CFS Health has been running for over a decade now and, you know, we've had some great support from doctors over the years, Dr. Lionel Lubitz and some specialists in Melbourne, Victoria, and I had some support from people in Stanford over in USA. But, you know, I never knew about this amazing doctor called Dr. Olivia Lesler. And I'm always on the lookout for people who are passionate about the field, but are also proactively focused on recovery. Anyway, long story short, I was in Sydney for a weekend. I went to a place for lunch and outside of the place for lunch, there was these tents and there were skin care. Skin uh, checks. Skin, skin check. cancer checks. With skin check champions run by Scott Maggs. Yeah, shout out to Scott Maggs. Shout out to them. No, honestly, they're changing so many lives in the skin game. And, you know, I had no idea how much melanoma and skin cancers affect families and people's lives and how preventable it is. Especially younger men. That's their whole gig. Yeah. I mean, it affects obviously all walks of life, but younger people tend to think that they're bulletproof. And then of course, in comes this young man. What's his name now? Toby Morrison to get a skin check. <laughs> To be fair, I'd never had a skin check ever. And I love the beach and I surf. You know, these guys, they have a charity and so they raise money and they do free skin checks all around Australia. It's absolutely an incredible program. And we were lucky enough to go to the charity event. I think it was last year. And it was just, I got shivers down my spine, the stories that were getting shared at that event. And I walked in and there was this little tiny pocket rocket doctor, <laughs> Dr. Olivia Lesler. And the first thing I said is, oh, so do you do this full time? Are you like a full time skin check doctor? And she said, oh, no, I actually specialize. I like to help people with chronic illnesses. You know, that's my expertise. That's the field that I love. I'm passionate about it. And I was like, oh, my God, really? Like, what are the chances? So she had no idea that, you know, CFS Health, the company that I started over a decade ago, specifically helps people with chronic fatigue syndrome. So I replied, that's funny. I help people with chronic fatigue syndrome. We help people get healthy and start living again. And you were like, really? And I said, yes, it's an <laughs> online recovery program. We help people in 54 countries. And of course that five minute skin check turned into like 20 minutes. And we were way over time. There was people lining up out the back. And I said, I would love to have you come on a webinar or we can do an interview together. And of course, a week later, I was like, no, this lady needs to come on board. And so, you know, it was just amazing really what happened. You got bought into CFS Health and it's just been awesome to just learn from you and have a resident doctor who actually cares so deeply about people who are affected by this and not only cares about it, but offers practical help and tangible solutions. And one of the things, Liv, that I'm probably going to get pretty emotional, but like, it's very rare to find a doctor who truly understands and can understand what they're going through, but also be really proactive and positive towards the future. And that's what resonated with me so much about you is like, I'd never met such a passionate doctor in this space before. There are some awesome doctors 
doing similar work, but it's very rare. And, you know, one of the things that I loved about you is like, man, what these people go through is so hard. It's mm -hmm. so isolating. It's so physically excruciating and mentally draining too. And when you said that, I was just like, oh my God, you know, we need to have her on. There's people listening to this podcast right now who have been told it's all in their head. They've been told that they need to motivate themselves. They need to push themselves. They need to sweat it out. You know, they're making this stuff up. And you can imagine when you're suffering at that such severe level, being told that there's actually nothing wrong with you and you are just being a hypochondriac is so damaging. And I still don't think you realize how powerful it is that the, your role that you're playing in this space of how many lives you're changing just by showing up with your profession, but with your knowledge and care and understanding of just how pivotal and helpful that is for people suffering out in the world. So I just want to thank you for being you truly, because you, you don't understand, you really don't like, you just have no idea how much of an impact and influence you're having with our people and now through the podcast too, but it just means a lot from the bottom of my heart, from everybody listening. We're so thankful for someone like yourself who's just showing up and speaking the truth and sharing, sharing possibility. And that's the important word. It's possibility. I yeah. think that, like you said, there are a lot of doctors who are very great at what they do. Passionate doctors about chronic disease. But I've noticed that in my travels, attending conferences, being in forums with other doctors, that everyone is focused on managing symptoms, which is very important. Don't get me wrong. Hugely important. But when there is no hope of a road out, then if you don't, as a practitioner, if you don't believe it, your patients pick up on that. And then they also start languishing in the medical model of despair. And that's no place to live. No place to live. And, you know, I've been pleasantly surprised with the stories of recovery that come out of CFS Health. Like you said, I've been involved with you guys for quite a while now. And the stories are real. The patients are real. Some patients do recover, you know, and so we just need to try and bottle whatever that is. And we know some of the ingredients. We know that support's important. Hope is important. Establishing a baseline, being kind to yourself, compassion. And notice all the words that I'm talking about has more to do with here, yeah. the mind and the heart and the proverbial hug that you get given by the community that you surround yourself with. So I'm not saying that diet, supplementation, grounding, whatever, don't work. Of course they do. They're all part of the stack. And I think we just have to just introduce people to the idea that there are options out there to try. No guarantee, but have some agency. That's, I think, what you do very well at CFS Health. We speak this in our model, in the CFS Health model, and one of the things we talk about is 70% of the chronic illness population are really focused on one thing, and that is symptom management and quick fix solutions. How can I get rid of my leg pain? How can I get rid of this? And that's useful. Like you said, it can be helpful to manage, but it's a really surface level, shallow conversation. The deeper conversation is, well, what does possibility look like? What's the pathway look like? And what does progress look like? You know, at the end of the day, it, it, we want to start living again and get healthy. That's what we do at CFS Health. And ultimately getting healthy and starting living again does a full loop and actually decreases symptoms and the suffering anyway, you know? So well, you know, actually, Toby, I want to sort of disagree with you a little bit there, right? Because I'm getting to a point now where I think that disease, pain, suffering is part of living. We don't like it. It's not pleasant. But that's why one of the things that I think I picked it up from one of you guys, probably you or Gemma, but to lean into it, right? Sometimes you got to stop fighting against what your body is obviously trying to tell you, trying to talk to you about. Sometimes you have to just lean in. And that leaning in to the symptom, to the place you find yourself in, which is not a great place, that's living. You know, I think that we need to reframe that a little bit because I know that 
for me, having gone through some dark times myself, the one thing you want to do is escape it. But escaping I listen to symptom, symptom management level isn't escaping it anyway. Whereas you're saying leaning into it, not trying to aid it and fix it, but going deeper into it, what's actually going on? How can I love right. myself through this? I mean, look, at the end of the day, if there was a quick fix, we'd know about it. <laughs> yeah, literally. What's the secret? What's the secret, Toby? Right. Just tell me what to do. Although really, I mean, if we get into it, <clears throat> the main thing is that chronic fatigue syndrome is a umbrella term, right? And it encompasses a lot of syndromes, diseases, disorders, which have fatigue as its main presenting symptom or one of its main presenting symptoms. And that's why some people will go to their GP and turns out it's their thyroid. That's why they've been so tired. You sort out the thyroid, boom, the fatigue lifts. That's great. That's what everyone's chasing, right? Everyone's chasing that diagnosis, which is going to be able to be fixed. I mean, we can get into a chronic disease and what that all means outside of an actual diagnosis of MECFS. But generally speaking, if you have a diagnosis of MECFS, it's because you've been through the ringer a thousand times, probably. You've been in the medical desert. It's a diagnosis of exclusion to a certain extent still, and you get to a point where, okay, it's not this, 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 this. And that's when doctors then go. Medical desert. I just think that this is so perfectly put. And I feel like that's mm. where, you know, when I went through it myself, I did feel like I was in a desert. And this was 17, 18 years ago, almost two decades ago, when there was no YouTube, there was no Facebook, mm. there was only negative blogs online. Yeah, toxic, toxic blogs. Very toxic. I'd love to talk about environment in, you know, coming up. That'd be great because I think it's so important. But yeah. the pain and suffering that I went through was so extreme for myself and my family that I literally made a pact to myself that when I get better, I'm going to make sure that no one else has to experience what I experienced on my own mm -hmm. to give them practical solutions. Because I saw a world where there was doctors and the medical system, which is so helpful for so many damn things. And then there was this gap. And the gap was there is no practical, tangible help for people with chronic illnesses. The best advice I got back then was, well, you just need to sleep better, eat better and start moving. And it was like, I'm either sleeping 17 hours a day or I can't sleep at all. I don't know what to eat because my digestive system is so out of whack. For me, exercise meant going for a 10 kilometer run. I don't even know how to walk to the front door right now. Like I'm so deconditioned. So, you know, that's how CFS Health was born because it was like, well, let's get practical help no matter what stage you're at in recovery, you know. But I really do feel like a lot of people are suffering in this medical desert. And that's your superpower, isn't it? I mean, it's the archetypical wounded hero. You know, many of us come into this healing space. I say healing, not medical. Healing space because you've experienced pain, you've experienced suffering, you've experienced loss, you've experienced disease. Either you've come out of it the other end, the other side, or you're still in it, but you realize that there are ways to be sick better, if that makes sense. Maybe if I go extreme with this one, everybody's going to die, right? And having worked in hospital, having done palliative care, there are different states of being at the end. When people get a terminal diagnosis, of course, they're chasing a cure. Of course, they're chasing pain relief. They're chasing all those things, which is completely valid. But the elephant in the room is that whether or not you get an extra few months or years under your belt, at the end of the day, we all have to face how are we going to die? How much of that bridge do you cross with regards to mindset and forgiveness, self-forgiveness, forgiveness of others, you know, all the Kubler-Ross stuff, right? And it's a little bit like that with disease and pain and something like CFS or chronic disease, which is what I deal a lot with. There is the wallowing in self-pity and angst and anger, frustration and marinating in that. I call it a pity party. 
Billy Barry. And that's not to take away from the fact that this is really frustrating. This is really fucking terrible, if I can swear. <laughs> you can it is, though. Like, but, and it's a deal. Right. But at some point, and this is why, like, as much as there is absolute hope, I believe that. I've seen what lots of patients have managed to do with CFS health especially. Of course, there is hope, of course, but one of the things that I feel we do well too is with talking to the clients and the patients about just to a certain extent, surrendering a little bit and trying to listen to what your body is saying. Because up till when you do get better, that point in the future, next week, next year, 10 years time, you do have to live with whatever chronic disease you have and there are different ways to live with it and trying to help patients go back inside themselves trying to support patients through learning to live and you know we have to be so careful with our words right because it's something that you say a lot acceptance but not resignation the way you're describing it is there's basically two ways to go about it and one of the things that we see online a lot is this uh, thing of like i've got to fight my illness i'm a warrior i'm a chronic illness warrior we've done this to people that's the words that we use right everything is militarized everything is us versus them you know it's mm. it's the war on cancer it's the war on drugs people who go to war they're spent they're really spent i think gabo mate now has a new book out called the myth of normal I haven't read it yet, but I've listened to a few podcasts because I think the man is brilliant. And, you know, in some of the podcasts that I've heard him speak in, and he really, he's kind of talking about this as well. It's like, we're so fixated on fighting a negative, aggressive place to be in that we stop trying to figure out what our body is telling us. What's gone wrong so that we got to this point? What's the message in the mess? You know, I always say to clients, because it's just so easy from the outside, I was in it as well. You know, I was there for years and it wasn't until I stopped fighting and I started coming from a place of love. It wasn't until I stopped coming from a place of fear and lack to a place of inner certainty and really honoring myself and just doing what was appropriate and having that piece of not overcompensating from losing my past, but just building the new and acceptance isn't resignation was the starting point. And actually, honestly, as soon as I did that, I started to make progress really quick compared to not accepting, being frustrated, fighting against myself. You know, it was a constant loop and negative cycle that I see so many people struggle with. And one of the first things that I recommend is what would it be like for you if you didn't have to fight? Mm. how would it be if you didn't have anything to prove anymore if you had to come from this place of you know conquering something because as dr olivia just said people in war are tired <laughs> i think the reason why i kind of wanted to drive home a little bit about how there's different ways of being different ways of feeling into everything is because i'm part of many patient forums online and i'm just a fly on the wall I'm not there to give opinions. I'm not there to do anything except observe. And that is because sometimes patients will say things to each other that they won't say to their friends, family, or doctors. And there's something for a doctor to learn from that. But one of the things that I have seen on those forums, many of those forums, is that it is a place of darkness where the darkness is multiplied and then swapped from person to person. What you focus on expands, right? Right, mm. right, exactly. You breathe life into it. And again, right, because I think with the nature of this podcast, obviously people who are listening to it are sick. People may have MECFS who are listening to this. And I want to make sure that everybody realizes we are not invalidating their pain. We're not invalidating their experience. I'm just saying that there are other ways to experience pain and suffering. Yes. Oh my God, that is so freaking insightful the people we surround ourselves with right so you can surround yourself with negative sufferers of cfs 
and all you do is just exchange woeful tales of anger or you can surround yourself by other sufferers who are trying their best reframing supporting it's a big difference i mean i challenge actually anybody who's part of a patient forum and as a patient to go through all the posts and to see the energy that's being encapsulated in that post because that energy is what you're surrounding yourself with and the language as well you know this is just the way it is for me you know i'm gonna wait for a cure the anger and uh, the loss of agency i think that's terrible as someone who's suffered with a chronic disease before not cfs but i used to have ibs for 13 years yeah what's that I want to show you this. You haven't seen this, but you know how I love geeking out on models and frameworks. So we actually (laughs) created this at the start of this year. And there are four stages of recovery readiness. And so the four stages are this, giving up at the bottom. This is where we believe that there is no options. Like you said, there's no agency. There's nothing I can do. I give up. You're complaining a lot. So these people are in the forums going, why me? And they just want to quit. And it's funny because a YouTube subscriber posted the most brilliant comment the other day, and it's so in line with what you said. He said, in a time where we have every right to complain, really, on so many levels, it's really important that we don't because it's not good use of our energy. 100%, you do have a right to complain. You know, it's not fair. It's not easy. And also it's not good use of your energy to complain. But if you look at the model here, we've got a second level is hoping, you know, so we're hoping, we're hoping that something happens, but we're kind of just praying, but nothing's really happening. We're lost. We're guessing we're self-sabotaging. Then we move to the seeking stage where we're coping, we're managing symptoms. We're seeking things outside of ourselves. We're consuming and we're feeling tested. And then, you know, one of the, things that we help people with in our program is we get to the owning stage and really ultimately owning is the same word as agency which is inner certainty self-led and becoming true to yourself and so we know in the dark green zone of owning that the body heals itself if you do the right things at the right time or you give your body the best opportunity to be able to heal exactly exactly And how nice does that feel versus it's not possible for me. I need someone or something to fix this and get this away. As you know, I do a lot of DNA SNP analyses. And when you're in the course of doing genetic information and doing the research and speaking to people about it, it's incredible the extent to which they believe that their diseases and disorders are because of genes and that is a complete loss of agency and they just wind up floating along the river of life a victim to their genes that is not true there are certainly some genes which mutations can cause a disease you know the inevitability of huntington's for example those are very rare very rare otherwise the genes will set up your propensity for your risk for they load your guns but you still have to provide the environment within which to fire those guns that's agency that's in your control and a lot of the time we can try to and i have seen reholstering of those guns so i just wanted to make sure that people also realize that if they've been told oh you know you're sick because we don't know but it's your genes Oh, your mother also has chronic fatigue. Oh, it's definitely your genes. You know, that is a very old fashioned and uneducated take on genes, right? In that genes absolutely will give you susceptibility and risks, but a lot of it is actually in your control. And imagine if you believe that. That's the problem. And this is why mindset is so important because it's not that you positively think yourself better, right? If you believe that there's nothing you can do because you've listened to one person tell you that well your actions and behaviors are going to model that actual belief and what if you believe that it was possible to change what if you believe that you know there are things in your control what if you believe that you can start to get into the owning stage or the agency stage how would you 
think differently? How would you act differently? How would you show up to your world every single day? It would be a totally different feeling. I can feel that in my body as I'm talking, as I say it, you feel lighter. Mm -hmm. There's a sense of feeling well-being with the words that we're using here. Well, you know, as you know, I do chronic diseases, then that includes cancer. And even when the odds are against you, those are still statistics, right? Because if 1% go on to survive, whatever it is, why can't that 1% be you? Now, there is a big difference, and this I have to address. There is a massive difference between fantasy world, right? Mm -hmm. And the keeping the flame of hope alive. Because doctors love to throw around the words false hope. But when you ask them what that means, they wind up lying back on statistics and they'll say things like, oh, well, this is terminal or whatever it may be. And there's no hope of recovery. Or like some of my colleagues, I've heard them say that if you get muscle activation syndrome or POTS or EDS, and which is closely linked with CFS, and CFS as well, the number of clinicians and researchers I know who do not believe recovery is possible, management only is amazing. And all the case studies where people have recovered, yeah. have bounced back, it's an anomaly. It's a miracle. But they, they don't want to know more about those recovery stories to figure out what it is about those ones that we could then apply to other people. Because surely... Surely the keys, not key, there's not one, the keys to recovery are going to be found in the recovery stories. This is not just for CFS. This is for cancer. This is for everything else, mm. right? Mm. False hope for me is a nonsense term, right? Hope simply for me as a definition is the absence of despair. Mm. Sometimes that is where you feel like you need to go despair once in a while, like we all do, mm. right? But it's what we do after. Do we pick ourselves up after mm. or do we get on a farm and share our misery? Isn't she brilliant, guys? <laughs> so, <laughs> I love this. <laughs> so passionate. Yeah, no, it's spot on. It's just so spot on what you're saying. And I just feel like, yeah, it's either victimhood or agency and it's a choice. You know, and you've seen so many patients with lots of different problems. Some of these stories are just incredible. But my question is, have you actually ever seen an overnight miracle or is it just focusing on the keys? And, you know, cause I've never met any member who's recovered say to me, Toby, Toby, oh my God, it was this one thing. And I'll ask, what did you do? Well, you know, back when I was struggling in stage one, I did this. And then stage two, I did this. And then here I did this. And then I went backwards a little bit. And then I learned this and I had to do that. For me, I've never met anyone who has been like an overnight miracle. It's always just doing the work at the right time, doing the right thing at the right time to get the right result and then progressing beyond yeah. that. Yeah, 100%. Just like last words before we wrap up this episode, for anyone who is struggling with, chronic illness, chronic disease, whether it's ME, CFS or anything else, what would your bit of advice be for them? Wow. Okay. So I think the bit of advice would actually be that your power, you never lose it. It's there. You have to find it and nobody is going to save you. So it really is in here, and I'm indicating for those people who aren't watching this, that hearing this, I'm indicating my heart. It really is in there. And, you know, this is not just about recovery, okay? But it's also about how to lean into what's happening with you right now and to experience whatever it is that you're experiencing, the chronic disease you're experiencing in a different way. And... Am I always hopeful that recovery is possible? Absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. But there's this, you know, there's this phase before that phase. And this phase is about starting to listen to yourself and know yourself. So simple, but so profound. And, you know, I say that recovery actually is quite simple, but simple doesn't mean it's easy. And I think that's, that's right. important for, for people out there listening that, 
yeah it does sound simple but don't beat yourself up if you're having a hard time with it you know because it isn't easy and everyone on the outside who doesn't understand it they're gonna have opinions about it and you just need to just have that self-compassion for yourself Liv, thank you so, so much you're amazing yeah. appreciate it and i'll speak to you all soon thanks again okay bye i hope you found this episode of the podcast really really helpful here are three ways we can help you whenever you are ready. So first of all, we have a free information group on Facebook. And so if you do have a Facebook account, make sure you go and join that group. There is strictly no negative venting. It's a very supportive, uplifting group. And there are some great trainings in there that can help you get started with your recovery. So it's called the CFS Health Recovery Information Group. There's a link here anyway, so click that link and join it. The second thing is we have a bunch of free trainings that will really help you understand where you're at, but also help you move forward. So we're going to leave a bunch of free trainings for you. So click on that. We'll send it to your email and obviously you can watch them in your own time. And thirdly, we've just created a 15 minute chat link. So if you're someone who's like, man, this sounds really good. This is really helpful. I really want some personal help and you want to have a step-by-step -step plan that will help you go from where you're at to where you want to be. We have opened up a few spots to have a 15 minute call, no strings attached. Basically this call is to see if or how we can help you. If we can, we'll be able to share with you some information on what that would look like. And if we can't, we'll send you some free resources that will help you if you would like to do that. So we're going to leave a link below. You can book in your 15 minute call. This is not a coaching call. So don't expect to get coaching in a 15 minute call. This call is really to have a conversation around you, what you need help with, and whether or not we can work together to help you get the results that you want. So if CFS Health, the mentorship program, sounds something you're interested in, but you're just not quite sure about it yet, this is a perfect opportunity to book in that call, have a chat, and then of course we can go deeper if this is something that you would like to do. Hope you found the podcast helpful. Please leave some love, especially on the YouTube channel. Go and comment on the videos that you found helpful and uh, appreciate all your support. And we look forward to speaking with you soon. All the best for now. Speak to you soon. Bye.